Greetings everyone. We come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I begin, I'd like to start with prayer. Oh, Holy Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ to thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. I ask, Lord, that you would reveal your love to these wonderful people here in Santa Monica and anyone else who will listen to this video in the future. I pray that you would open their spiritual eyes that they might see, open their spiritual ears that they might hear, open their heart and mind that they might understand. And by the power of your spirit and your love and your grace and your word and your mercy and your kindness, draw them to saving faith in your son, Jesus. I commit this into your hands for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, everyone. We come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Yes, we want you to know we're not here by accident or because we were bored and we had nothing else to do. We came here to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with the people here, the Santa Monica Pier, and we desire that you hear the gospel, that you understand who Jesus is, and that he loves you so much he can't take his eyes off you, and that he desires everyone to be forgiven of their sins, have salvation, and go to heaven for all eternity. Scripture says, Mankind shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The Old Testament, the New Testament. All Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in right living, that the man or woman of God might be fully equipped and lacking nothing. He says, holy men of God wrote as they were inspired by God what to write. In other words, they were literally like the pen in God's hands, using the uniqueness of their personalities to write what God wanted them to write and to preserve it so people could read about God, for he is the word of God. Scripture says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through him and by him, and nothing was made that was made, and all things are held together and consist because of him. And scripture says in John chapter 1, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, John writing says. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes, Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's a gift of God, not of yourself, not of works, lest anyone should boast. What is grace? God's unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. Have you received the grace of God? Do you have peace in your heart? So many people want peace. So many people want to live a life free of problems. Well. How can you have real peace in your life without anxiety if you reject the Prince of Peace? People take alcohol in order to escape reality and the hardships of life. They take narcotics. They get involved with immoral relationships. They get involved with entertainment and things that don't matter for eternity in order to just escape the reality and the hurts of life. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that is the reason we are here. We want you to receive Christ even as we have. He changed my life over 37 years ago, and my life's never been the same since. I was a missionary in Ukraine off and on for 25 years. I left the comforts of California, Orange County, in the December of 1992. And I went by faith over to the nation of Ukraine right after the fall of communism. And I shared and preached the gospel in different places throughout that country, in trams and trolleys and buses and metros and hospitals and the schools, on the streets and in swap meets, because it is the good news. There's nothing more important we could share with you than what Jesus Christ means to us and what he did for every person who's ever lived. He died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And he is fully God and fully man and he offers forgiveness of sins and salvation in heaven to all who put their faith and trust in him and him alone. 
Not faith in yourself, not faith in your accomplishments, not faith in the Pope or your good works or your money or some false religion of man or some ideology or some philosophy of man. It's only because you have faith in Jesus Christ. And what does it mean to have faith? It means that I entrust my life to Jesus Christ as the savior of my soul. I disconnect from the idea that I can be saved any other way. I remove myself from the idea that I can be saved by joining some religion of man or joining a church or doing good deeds. Because many people have done good deeds, but it doesn't mean that their sins are forgiven and they're going to heaven. It's only because you have true, genuine, saving faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior of your soul. No, there is no other name given unto heaven among men by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. Only he lived an absolutely perfect life without sin. He is the perfect sacrifice. He is the one who voluntarily went to the cross because he knew there was no other way for mankind to be forgiven. See, we're all sinners because Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden when he disobeyed God and he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And after he did that, he plunged the whole human race into sin and depravity and that's why we're sinners. Because we're born with a sin nature. And you can't get rid of that sin nature no matter how many New Year's resolutions you may make, no matter what good deeds you do, you still have that sin nature that was passed on from Adam. And once you receive Jesus Christ in your life, you become forgiven and a new creation in Christ. And everything passes away and all becomes new and you become a citizen of heaven. And that is the good news of the gospel. It's not by works of righteousness that we do, but by His grace and His mercy. And so we just want you to embrace Jesus Christ. How can you say no to such love? Think about what He did on the cross and how He suffered. He suffered the most horrible, bloody, excruciating, painful, agonizing, shameful, lonely death you can possibly imagine. But not only that, all the sins of mankind throughout all humanity were placed upon him at the cross. And that's when he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God turned at that moment and couldn't look upon Jesus because all the sins of anyone who's ever lived were placed upon him. And But the grave could not hold him after he died on the cross. For he rose again on the third day, triumphantly, gloriously, victoriously. He conquered sin and death and the grave, Satan and hell, condemnation, judgment and the demons. And he offers forgiveness of sins and salvation to all who put their faith and trust in him. You don't automatically go to heaven just because you've been born here in America or some other country or just because you think you're entitled to heaven because you're a good person if you compare yourself to somebody else. No, we're all sinners. Scripture teaches us if you violate or trespass or offend in one area of God's law, you're guilty of all of His law. And that's why everyone needs forgiveness. And to say that you have no sin, it, you, you're deceived and the truth isn't in you. And you make God out to be a liar. Because then you're saying that you're not a sinner. And He declares everyone as a sinner. We all need forgiveness. We all need salvation. Everyone here in Santa Monica on this pier we know for sure is a sinner and we know that every single person on this pier needs Jesus Christ. Everyone needs forgiveness. So what's it going to be for you? Do you love Jesus Christ today or do you hate Jesus Christ today? Are you for Jesus Christ today? Are you against Jesus Christ today? If you died today for whatever reason, would you go to heaven because you have true, genuine, saving faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior? Has the Holy Spirit of God taken residence in your heart and in your life? 
See, that is the determining factor. If you have true, genuine, saving faith, then the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will come and take residence in your heart and you become the temple of God. If you embrace any other world religion or philosophy or ideology other than true Christianity and who Jesus is according to the scriptures, you cannot be saved, you cannot be forgiven, and the Holy Spirit of God will not take residence in your heart and in your life. Scripture says, to as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Are you led by the Spirit of God? Or are you led by the flesh, or by the mind, or by the devil? You need to know. Because it says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you're not a child of God says his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're a child of God how do you know that you're a child of God and that your sins are forgiven and that you're going to heaven it's a huge question that everyone needs to ask because you're not automatically entitled to heaven just because you've been born but unless you're born again you will not see the kingdom of heaven so what kind of characteristics happen to a person who is born again they desire to read the Word of God. They desire to pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus. They desire to obey the Word of God. They desire to apply what they read. They desire their mind to be washed by the cleansing Word of Jesus Christ and share His Word. They desire to go to church. They love the people of God. They're corrected by God when they sin. They sense His Holy Spirit. They have His presence in their life. They become the temple of God, a citizen of heaven. Their name goes in the Lamb's Book of Life. They're transferred from the power of Satan unto God. They are they change from death to life because they believe in the author of life, Jesus Christ. So many things happen to the believer in Jesus Christ. My life is so different. I used to lie all the time. I used to drink. I used to party. And, and now I have no desire for that. Yes, you can have a New Year's resolution. You can put these things away. But how are you going to get rid of the sin that began since you were a young person until now? You cannot. You can have a New Year's resolution. You can make some vow to yourself or to others. But that does not erase your sin. Your sin needs to be blotted out, erased, and forgiven for you to become a child of God. And it's only through the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary and your acceptance of who he is and what he did. Have you received Jesus Christ? The one who lived a perfect life. The one who did more miracles than anyone who's ever lived. The one who loves you with perfect love. Just how acquainted is Jesus Christ with every aspect of your life? Think about this and contrast it with anyone else you know that's ever lived in the history of man. Jesus Christ knows every thought that's ever been in your head, including the thoughts you have in your mind right now as you're here on this pier. He knows every meal you've ever eaten. He knows every word you've ever spoken. He knows every place you've ever been, every person you've ever met, every text you've ever sent. He knows every book you've ever read. He knows every song you've ever listened to. He knows every movie you've ever watched. He knows every place that you've visited. He knows everything about every subject and every person that ever lived in the history of man. He has no rival. No one compares to him. He has no equal. And no one is like him. And you can't go to heaven apart from having true, genuine, saving faith in him and him alone. Not him plus some of your works or your money or some ideology or philosophy or religious system. Only Jesus Christ. That's what true genuine saving faith is. When you realize that you're a sinner and you can't be saved and forgiven and go to heaven any other way. And you say no to yourself and you say and you change your mind and your thinking and you go I want to embrace Jesus Christ. I want him in my life. I know I'm a sinner. I'm asking for forgiveness of my sins. I want to go to heaven. See, the all, there, there is another alternative for those who don't want Jesus. What do you think it is? There is only heaven for those who truly believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. And there is hell for those who don't. And hell is so terrible, I don't even like to talk about it. But it wouldn't be right for us to 
share with you about God's love and his mercy and his kindness and his compassion and the fact that he sees everything, he knows everything, he hears everything, and that he's never made a mistake, but also we share about his righteousness, his justice, his holiness, and his wrath. And he said, the soul that sins shall surely die, but God takes no delight in the death of the wicked, but that they should turn and repent and be saved. Yes, that's God's desire, that everyone here in Santa Monica and whoever listens to this video is saved and born again and goes to heaven. Because hell is a place with no exit, no water, no Christians, no light, no respite from pain, and there's no repentance there, there's no belief there, there's no blessings. All the blessings that you have here on earth will be removed from you for all eternity in hell. And that's why we don't want you to go there, and God most certainly does not want anyone to go there. That's why he sent his only son, John 3.16. Let me share with you what it means and explain it in a way that's perhaps more understandable. For God the Father so loved the world and the people in the world, including everyone here in Santa Monica, that he gave and sent his only begotten son, his only son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever here in Santa Monica throughout all humanity believes in him, Jesus Christ, shall not, will not, should not perish, perish where? In hell for all eternity, but have everlasting life. And it goes on to say, For God the Father did not send His Son, Jesus Christ, to the people of the world, to the people of Santa Monica, in order to condemn them and pronounce judgment upon them, but that they might be saved through Him and by Him and because of Him and only because of Him. He who believes is not condemned, but the person who does not believe is condemned already why? Because he or she has not believed in the one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And he said, this is the condemnation. What is the condemnation? That light has come into the world. But men and women love darkness rather than light, therefore they don't come to the light. Yes, he is the light of the world. And those who follow him will not walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. He is the light of the world. Have you come to know Jesus Christ as the light of the world in your life? His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Yes, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Do you know Jesus? It is the most important decision of your entire life. Yes, come to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. He says, acquaint yourself with him, thereby peace will come to you. How can you have real peace in your life and free from the anxieties and stresses of life if you don't know Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace? You cannot. How can you be forgiven apart from believing in Jesus Christ? You cannot. How can you be protected from Satan and his demons that desire to steal, kill, and destroy your life apart from believing in Jesus Christ? You cannot. Scripture says, Don't store up for yourself treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. But instead, store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where they don't. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Is your heart focused on the things of God or the things of the flesh or the things of the world or the things of Satan? You need to know. If we were to follow you around all day today or throughout the week or for a whole month, is there enough evidence to show forth in your life that you're a true, genuine child of God and your sins are forgiven and that you're born again and that you're a true, genuine Christian? You need to know. Even Paul the Apostle writing to the Corinthian church said, examine yourself and prove that you be in the faith. Are you in the faith? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those who come to God must believe that he is God and he rewards those who diligently seek him. If you seek him, you will find him. He says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. To him who asks, receives. To him who seeks, find. To him who knocks, the door is open. Are you seeking? Are you looking for the meaning of life? Have you found Jesus Christ? He looks across the whole earth. Says the eyes of the Lord search to and fro across the whole earth.
He knows everything about you. If you go under a bridge or you go into a dark room and you can't hide from God, he sees everything, he hears everything, he knows everything. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what you ate for breakfast today. If you had breakfast, he knows what you did yesterday, 10 years ago, if you were living. He knows everything about every person that ever lived, more than Surrey, more than AI, more than every library that's ever existed all together throughout the entire world, through all history. He knows everything. And why not embrace him? Why would you say no? Because the consequences aren't a small thing. It's not like, oh, I'm just, like, like say I was drinking and I got t pulled over for a DU and I had a DUI, drinking under the influence, and I had to pay the consequences. Those are temporal consequences. If you reject Jesus Christ, it has eternal consequences. Scripture says the wages, or we could say the payment, or the reward, for sin, or sinning against God, who's absolutely perfect and holy, the wages of sin is death, not life. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, what a contrast. The wages of sin is death, eternal death. That's speaking of hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you want forgiveness of sin, salvation in heaven for all eternity, then it's only through Jesus. A person by saying no to Jesus Christ and his offer of forgiveness and salvation is then saying yes to Satan and eternal hell. We want you to realize that. And Satan desires to steal, kill, and destroy your life and deceive you all the way until you take your last breath so you end up in hell. That is his purpose and his agenda and his plan and his aim for every single person. But Jesus wants you to be saved, forgiven. You cannot be protected from Satan and his demons. Apart from the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary and your acceptance of who he is and what he did. Yes, you have no, no protection. And we want you to understand who Jesus is. He loves you so much he can't take his eyes off you. But so many people don't want anything to do with him. People are addicted to all kinds of things today. They're addicted to sports. They're addicted to all kinds of entertainment and video games and, and movies and concerts and just avoiding God, basically. And God wants you to embrace Him. He wants to be the one you worship, the one you focus on, the one you set your affections upon, your attention. Who or what do you worship today? Who or what is the object of your hope today? Who or what do you love today? Do you love Jesus Christ? Very good. Amen. Amen. Or do you hate Jesus Christ? Are you for Jesus Christ? Are you against Jesus Christ? If you died today, would you go to heaven? Because you have true, genuine, saving faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Are you born again? Are you a citizen of heaven? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Have you been adopted into the family of God? This is the most important decision of your entire life. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts and let them come to God for he will abundantly pardon you. The good news of the gospel is no matter what you've done, you can be forgiven. I don't care if you've had an abortion. I don't care if you lied. I don't care if you've stolen something. I don't care if you've been involved with some false religion that doesn't believe Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man, died on the cross and rose again on the third day. You can be forgiven. You can be forgiven of being an alcoholic, being addicted to narcotics. Every single sin Jesus Christ will forgive, except one sin. Does anyone know what that sin is? It is the sin of rejecting him who is the only one who can forgive you of your sins. That sin is unforgivable because then you're saying you don't want forgiveness of sins through the only one who can forgive you. Scripture says, He who knew no sin, speaking of Jesus Christ, became sin for us, a sin offering, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Only in Christ Jesus. Scripture says, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. 
No matter what you've done, it can be erased and blotted out and forgiven completely. This is the good news. I used to think I was a mistake. I used to think I was beyond forgiveness. Nobody, as long as they have breath, are beyond forgiveness. But you don't want to put it off because your heart can become hard and callous to the things of God, to the things of his kingdom, and, and you'll just want to avoid it. It says, he who is often reproved is, hardens his heart and is cut off and that without remedy. In other words, a person becomes more indifferent to the things of God and his kingdom and his word as they continue to hear the gospel and avoid Jesus Christ. And this is very sad because there can become a point in a person's life where they're so desensitized to hearing about sin and righteousness and judgment and, and the gospel that they don't want anything to do with God. And this is terrible. And we want you to embrace Jesus Christ and to be forgiven and to become a true genuine child of God and a citizen of heaven. Because you can't be saved any other way. You can't be forgiven. What is the purpose of your life? Preach it, brother. Preach it. The purpose of your life is to know Jesus Christ, to be forgiven of your sins, to know Him, to love Him, to worship Him, to serve Him, to glorify Him, to exalt Him, to praise Him, to thank Him, to pray to Him, to fellowship with Him, and to spend eternity with Him in heaven. That is the purpose of mankind. Not to reject him and his offer of forgiveness and salvation. Do what you want your whole life and end up in hell for all eternity, wishing you were never born. That is not God's will for anyone here in Santa Monica on this pier or anyone who will listen to this after. Absolutely not. He wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So you need to repent. What does it mean? Have a change of heart, a change of mind. It's change your thinking about who Jesus is and what he did. How he is fully God and fully man, lived a perfect life, voluntarily went to the cross, died on the cross for the sins of mankind according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Repent and believe the gospel. It says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It says repent and be converted that your sins be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Scripture says repent or have a change of mind, change your thinking, think differently, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins that you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, people are so interested in gifts around Christmas time or other holidays and we want you to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through genuine saving faith in Jesus Christ. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you're not a child of God, you're not a citizen of heaven, you're not forgiven and not going to heaven. So you need to know, does the Holy Spirit of God dwell within me? Have I become the temple of God? Does His Spirit bear witness with my spirit? I'm a child of God. Do I desire the things of God? Do I know if I died today for whatever reason, would I go to heaven because I have true genuine saving faith in Jesus Christ? Or would I spend eternity in hell? You need to know. It's no, there's no purgatory. There's no reincarnation. There's no annihilation. It is appointed to a person once to die and after that the judgment. Everyone will eventually stand before God and give an account of their life. It says one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You do it now voluntarily while you have breath and you receive him as your savior. Or when you take your last breath, once you've rejected him your whole life, then you stand before him as your judge. How much better to receive him as your savior? We want you to receive Jesus Christ. You don't automatically go to heaven. You're not entitled to heaven just because you've been born. We go to funerals and you see what, what different people say and the, the things they send by text to someone they know who died and they say, R.I.P., rest in peace. Well, we want you to know if a person rejected Jesus Christ, they are not in a place of peace because they have rejected the Prince of Peace who is Jesus Christ. You cannot rest in peace. Scripture says there is no peace for the wicked. And who is the wicked? Those who reject Jesus Christ as their savior because you can't go to heaven without Jesus Christ. So what's it gonna be for you? How can you reje reject the one who is the Prince of Peace? He is Emmanuel, he is God with us. 
He is our wonderful counselor. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. And with his great power and outstretched arm and hand, he created the heavens and the earth. There is nothing too hard for him to will, to do, or, per or perform. He spoke the planets into existence. He calls all the stars by name. He causes the sun to rule by day and the moon and the stars to rule by night. He causes the winds to blow and the waters to flow. And he is the one who keeps your heart beating all throughout the day, throughout the night, and throughout your whole life. Scripture says, in him we live and move and have our being, and he gives life and breath to all mankind. So why would you say no to the one who keeps your heart beating? Because what if your heart stops? Then what? You have to stand before God, and he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. How much better to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. Yes, but we want you to know that it is a narrow gate. Many people repeat a prayer. Many people walk an aisle at a crusade. Many people go to church. Many people even read the scriptures. But yet they're not born again of the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So we don't want you to be deceived. Do you truly know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Not through somebody else. Not because your grandma or grandpa or someone you know, one of your relatives, or someone you know who is a Christian in the past? No. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Personally. Where you know that you are saved. You know that you're born again. You know that you're going to heaven. You know that you're forgiven. You know that you're a child of God. Do you have any doubt? Because you don't want a 50-50 chance. Like playing the lottery or some other m game. It is not a game. Mankind's eternal destiny is dependent upon what they do with Jesus Christ and nobody else. All judgment has been handed over to Jesus Christ. Those who honor the Son, honor the Father. If you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father who sent Him. And Scripture says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness or a right standing with God, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, not upon Buddha or being a Mormon or following Islam or being a good Catholic or following Jewish religion. No, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. There is no other name given unto heaven among men by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. Scripture says, you search the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life, but they are which testify of me. But you won't come to me, Jesus says, that you might have life. He is the author of life. He is the source of life. He is the bread of life. He is the word of life. He is the prince of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to God the Father except through him. And he is the resurrection and the life. And those people who believe in him, though they may die, yet shall they live. And those people who live and believe in him shall never die. He is the resurrection and the life. And he loves you. He loves you so much. And we want to emphasize that to you. Like the sign says, trust Jesus and be saved. Entrust your life to him as the savior of your soul. And disconnect and remove yourself from the idea you can be saved any other way. No person, place, or thing can save you from your sins and from hell. And from Satan who desires to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Only Jesus Christ. Only he lived an absolutely perfect life. He died as a substitutionary sacrifice in your place and mine. And he voluntarily went to the cross. And he died on the cross the most bloody, horrible, excruciating, painful, agonizing, shameful, lonely death you can possibly imagine. But not only that, all the sins of the world were placed upon him at the cross.